Um, welcome to tonight. I'm just going to do a sermon on anointed and faith. And I've just chose the topic anointed and faith, and I think it's more that we step out in faith. But I want to start off with praying first, and I want to just know that these are God's words through me. These are not my words, but they are God's words. Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight. We ask the Holy Spirit, we ask the Comforter, our Teacher, to guide us, to teach us that these are not my words, but these are your words, Lord. Lord, that the people that hear this and hear the message, Lord, that we encourage them to read the Scriptures like the Bavarians did, to examine the Scriptures when Paul was preaching to them. And Lord, that we just ask the Holy Spirit to touch people's hearts tonight as we get into this message. Thank you, Lord. Now, getting into the message. Now, getting into this message, we're going to be looking at Psalms 2, verses 1 to 7. Now, this is the New King James Version, but I want to look at Psalms 2, 1 and 7. And the topic tonight that I'm looking at is, I've named this, Anointed and Faith. Psalms 2, so you open your Bibles to Psalms 2, verses 1 to 7. Why do nations rage, and people plot and vain things? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision, then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress. Them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king out my holy hill of Zion. And verses 7. I will declare to the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son today. I have begotten you. And we see back in verses 2. The, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Against the Lord and against the Lord Jesus Christ, which was anointed and which was sent to this earth. He walked this earth as the Lord Jesus Christ and was sent down from heaven and he was anointed as his anointed, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And we see here, why do nations rage and people plot to vain, plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers and take the council together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast their cords from us. And in a sense, let us break these bonds in pieces and cast their cords from us is about praying, being within the Lord, being 100% the Lord's disciples and just going, I am going to follow him no matter what cost. It doesn't matter how much he's, it's going to cost, but let us break these bonds and pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall hold them in derision. And then they shall speak to them in his rough and distress them in his deep displeasure. I will declare a decree, the Lord has said to me, you are my son today and I have begotten you. We see that in verses 1 to 6, we are here told who would appear at the adversary to Christ. As the word in the kingdom of Satan, unconverted of men or of every rank, party and character are stirred up by him to oppose the cause of God. The adversary to Christ. But it is through the blood of the Lamb, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we go on to this, we see how, how we see how, how Abraham was, was tested for his faith. And we see that how, we see how God provides to Abraham. We'll go further on to this adversary to Christ. If we all turn our Bibles now, look at the adversary at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 4. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, 
or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is a person with adversary to Christ. I'm going to read now from 1, and then I'll read 1 through down to 5. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and amen, we want to be there to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. We want to be part of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we go further into this, we'll realise that it's very important that we're not adversaries to Christ, but we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we obey his commands faithfully, 100%. Because we want to be part of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by the Spirit or the Word or by the letter, as if from as us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, and the son of perdition. And verses 4, as we just read before, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, and that is worshipped, so he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still when, when with you, and I told you these things? So, so what is God saying here in, in the Matthew Henry's commentary of the whole Bible? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, caution is against the error that the time of Christ is coming, was just at hand, and there would be the first, a general apostasy from faith and revealing of the anti-Christian man of sin. The caution against the error of time of Christ's coming was just at hand, and there would be a general apostasy from the faith and revealing of the anti-Christian of man of sin. And we see in 1 to 4 his destruction and that those who obey him. And 5 and 12, the security of Thessalonians from the apostates, exhaustion and steadfastness and prayer for them. To see that God wants us to stand fast in giving thanks to God and praying for our brethren. Also, God wants us to bound to give thanks to God for our brethren. We go now to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, so we're still in 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 13 and 7. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation, chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and the belief in truth. And verses 14, to which he called you to by our gospel for attaining the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 15, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which were taught, whether by the word or by the epistle. And 16, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. To establish you in every good word and work. Judas, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve apostles, became the apostate. Apostasy in Christianity refers to the rejection of Christianity by someone who is formerly was a Christian. The term apost apostasy comes from the Greek word aposteria, meaning defection, departure, revolt or rebellion. So that word, the Greek word is A-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-A, -A, apostri, right, apost I, which meaning defection, department, revolt or rebellion. It has been described as a willful falling away from the rebellious against Christianity. Apostasy is a rejection of Christ by one who has been a Christian. So that's A-O-P-A-S-T-A-S-Y, who's been a Christian. Two, apostasy is a theology category describing those who have voluntarily con consciously abandoned their faith in God of the covenant and who manifest himself most completely Jesus Christ. Apostasy is the, uh, the order, at atonement of conversion. It is the disconversion. Now let's turn our Bibles now to James 2, 14 and 26. So we, need, so we see here, as we're saying, 
Oh, before we go to James 2, 14 and 26, I want to just go back a little bit. And we see here in verses 13 of 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 2, 13, But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and, and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to keep giving God all the glory. We need to keep giving God all the glory and just surrendering to God and just accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, surrendering it to him, giving it to him and, and trusting him in every day through our prayers, through reading the Bible, through fellowship, through worship. And we need just to keep having this relationship with God. And this is where God, through the Word of God, would encourage us in our beliefs and in our truths that, that from God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. I believe in the truth. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ who died on that cross. He shed his blood. He bore the sins of all of us. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. He rose three days later and ascended into heaven. But before all this has happened, he gave us a gift. He gave us a gift of the Holy Spirit. And, he, and the Holy Spirit is here now before Christ comes back. The Holy Spirit is something that we can believe and we believe in the truth. And the truth is there is the Holy Spirit that through the Holy Spirit we communicate with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that way we have that relationship and that divide is covered because we choose to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Going on, so we've all turned our Bibles now to James 2, 14 to 26. Faith without works is dead. So, looking at James 2, 14 to 26. What does it profit, profit my brethren, if someone says he has faith but, but, but does not have works, can faith save him? 15. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food. 16. And one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm and, and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? And 17 says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith. Without your works, I will show you my faith by my works. You believe, verses 19, that there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham the father of justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by faith he was made perfect? And verses 23 of James chapter 2 says, 23, and the scriptures are filled with, it says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for the righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by the works, but not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For it is the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And I want to go back to verses 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead... And I know this is pretty harsh and, and it's going to be pretty much of a shock to people. Some people will, will agree with me and some people won't. But we see here in James 2 and we go to 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead. So you need to receive the Holy Spirit. Because if you do not have the Holy Spirit in you, then you are dead to God. Anyone can walk around saying, well, I'm a Christian. Yes, it is important that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour and believe. But there is another part, Acts 2 verses 38 says, As Peter said, 
Repent, turn away and repent of your sins for the remission of your sins. But be baptised in the Holy Spirit. So if I go to Acts 2 just for a minute, and we look at Acts 2. So we turn our Bibles now to Acts 2. We'll see where Peter is talking. And this is after a sermon that was done. And there was many people that followed after that. So Acts 2 verses 38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And having the Spirit living inside you, you are not dead. Your body is not dead because you're with Spirit, not without Spirit. And we see here that in James 2 verses 26 says for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so for the body without the spirit is dead but the spirit is alive and if you do what it says in Acts 2 38 then Peter said to them repent let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you all shall receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all of you are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call in verses 39. So the bad news, guys, if you only just say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then the body without the Spirit is dead. You need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The question is, it is simple in saying, well, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But the second part of this is, is to accept and be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And when you accept and you say, yes, I want to receive the Holy Spirit for the remission of my sins. And I want to receive the, be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. Then you are alive again because you have the Spirit in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. For as the body without the Spirit is dead. So if you do not have the Holy Spirit inside you, you are dead to Jesus. Because the only way you can communicate with the Lord Jesus Christ is through being baptised. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then he goes on to say, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we can walk around and say, th say that we don't have the Holy Spirit. So really in James 2 verses 26, For as the body without the Spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. So you've got to be able to work on the issue and also have faith and say, well, I've been working on this issue. I've been reading the Bible, reading a book, uh, sweeping the floor. That's working. That's using your mind. So you've been reading the Bible. You've been going to church. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And then suddenly you say, okay, I'm, I've been working. I've been thinking about these things. I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to say, Pastor, can I please accept the Holy Spirit as, my, as the Holy Spirit? I want to receive and be baptised in, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. And I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Sure, no problems. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, suddenly things change. Your eyes are more wide open, the knowledge is there, and you can and you just know there is something different about you. And every individual is going to be different. See, what was not Abraham's father justed by the works when he offered Isaac his son so to the altar? And when I come back with part two of this, I'm going to be looking and then we're going to be turning our Bibles to it. Abraham's faith is confirmed in Genesis 22. But I just want to really reiterate that, that what we've, been, what we've been looking at is that we really need to be um, having faith and we really need to be believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and we really need to be doing what in Acts 2 38 says then Peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit
as the Holy Spirit is our comforter, our teacher, and that we listen to and actually helps us in our walk daily with the Lord Jesus Christ, with our walk in our walk with Christ. I'm going to leave it here, but when we come back, just leaving you with James 2, verses 21. Was, the Abra was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on, onto the altar? He was listening to Jesus. He was listening to God at that time. He was listening to God at that time and God said to Abraham, do what I've asked you to do. Take Isaac. I mean, that must have been hard for him. But he obeyed the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And that's what Abraham did. So when we come back, we're going to be turning our Bibles to um, Abraham's faith is confirmed in Genesis 22. So I'll leave it there. Thank you.